Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and I'm going to show you what you need to do to set yourself up for Android app development with a real device. So what you're going to need first is a real Android device. Just about any will work, but the main thing is I recommend to use a name brand device. Mine is an LG uh, Venice 430, I think, or 730 or something. And you'll have a lot easier time setting this up if you're using a real name brand device because I've had students that try to do this with these weird off brand $79 Android devices and they've had difficulty if not complete trouble. So you'll need your device and you'll also need the USB cable so the standard USB cable. So that's what the hardware that you need. Let's talk about what the software you need. So let me switch over here. What you need for your software is um, this is um, since since it'll be a little difficult to show you on my real device I'll show you on my Android virtual device here um, let's pretend this is my real device let's pretend this is my LG Venice so everyone's is going to be a little bit different because the great thing about Android is that it's open source and therefore changeable but the bad thing about Android is that it's open source and therefore changeable what I mean is that the set the way I'm gonna show you right now with my device might be different will probably di be different than what your device will will do so I'm on the home screen I'm gonna select the settings menu it pops up with system settings I'll click system settings and on this device right away I can find a spot that says developer options on my LG um, I get the same thing if I go over to the home screen I get system settings if I select that and scroll all the way down I get developer options that's easy I also have a Motorola droid X, an older one, and for that one I have to go first into the applications, uh, the, the, the application screen, and then the settings, and then I'll find developer options. And more and more I'm seeing that students have to, uh, before they can see developer options, they have to go to some place like the About phone and tap the Android version number seven times and then you'll get developer options uh, something like that your mileage may vary please look it up go online search uh, for example activate developer options Motorola droid um, G you know look it up once you found developer options tap that and you'll see an option somewhere about USB debugging debug mode when USB is connected you want to turn this on so tap that USB debugging and it'll give you a warning USB debugging is intended for development purposes only so take this warning to heart because this is saying that now you will be able to install any application onto your device that's what we want because we're, in, we're installing an application that we're creating the problem is if you leave this turned on and you use your device on a regular basis you may accidentally come across a website that is sending you an application that uh, might want to uh, tap into your device so I would recommend turn this on while you're developing your project and then turn it off uh, when you're done developing for the day or another option what I've done is I found a cheap um, Android device that I only use for development. This LG Venice, I found it at uh, Best Buy for like $65 and it's perfect for what I need, for what we need in this class. So I know the I know the problems that could happen, so I'll click OK. In this screen I also want to activate Stay Awake. That way my device will not be going to sleep every time I put it down it'll be plugged into my computer anyway so I'm not going to be losing power so turn on stay awake and USB debugging your screen may also show the option for allow mock locations uh, I'm gonna say this doesn't matter but leave it off mine is on because I've got a virtual device so of course there's mock locations but on your real device which will tap into GPS later we want real locations so leave that off that's all you need to do for 
your Android device itself. So I'll go back home. What I need to do next now is get the USB driver for my device. Now, if you got your device, AT&T, Verizon, whatever, they'll probably give you, they'll sell you your device and there will be an installation disk so that you can then um, uh, copy your music over to it. You know, some sort of, some sort of uh, USB driver like that. But what we want is a specific kind of driver. This is known as an OEM USB driver, the original equipment manufacturer USB driver. We need that driver to tap into the capabilities of our device. And again, everyone's is going to be different here. So as the best that I can tell you is, type the name of your device. So this is LG Venice. Uh, I think it's the 430 or maybe the 730. I think it's the 730. And then OEM USB driver. So the keywords are OEM USB driver and then the name of your device. At this point, hopefully, your search results will give you right away where do you get the drivers at. Mine is right here. My LG phones, USB driver download. That's exactly what I want. Um, yep, that zip file basically. Uh, make sure you're you're going toward the the manufacturer's website. That's usually the best way. We're not doing anything about rooting our device or voiding the warranty. We're just activating the developer mode and we're getting the the driver. Depending on your driver then, it's an easy matter of double-clicking the file and installing it. Once it's all installed, then we're ready to use it on the next step. So in a nutshell, that's what you need to do. Again, if it's not quite working for you, look it up online. The name of your device, OEM USB driver, and how to activate your developer settings. Uh, hopefully it's just as easy as going through the steps that I told you. If not, then oh, you can always search it. LG Venice 730 uh, Developer Settings and find what you're looking for. On our next video, I'll talk about uh, now that we've got our device set up, let's put our, our application onto the device. So come back for that.